says, you do. You ain't got to do it here, but you got to do it at some point. The enemy's running over children of God. Now you can get run over or you can fight back. But the only weapon you got is the word of God coming through your mouth. You can read your Bible all day, but you can't activate it till you say it. I'm preaching, I'm teaching already. Come on, come on. I read my Bible every day. Okay, but do you say it? Because that's when the enemy, who knows the word better than all of us, he can't fight that word when you say it. A lot of us read and don't say it. Folk won't talk about how bad their situation is, how sick they are. You're going to get sicker. And your situation going to get bad. But you could have said, I'm healed by his stripes. And that whatever state I am, whether I'm a bound or up top, God going to be with me. Can't always confess what you see. If it's negative <laughs> and what you feel. Ain't nobody caring about your feelings. When you're going to get over to your feelings is an idol. Don't nobody care about your feelings. That's the problem with most Christians. They want the whole world to revolve around their feelings. The devil don't care about your feelings. And I'm going to tell you something else. God didn't put it in his word that he cares about your feelings. He does have compassion. But he has compassion and moves where he sees faith. All oh, that's this way I feel. That's just how I feel. Feel that way then. Faith don't work on feelings. Faith works by the word. What makes the word powerful is it supersedes feelings, ideologies, theologies, philosophies, vainglory, because it's God's word. My feelings say I feel like a sinner sometimes, but my faith says I am a son of God. This bigger than Jesse, I'm somebody. I'm more than somebody. I am a son of God. I feel sick, but the Bible says I am healed. You'll have plenty of days when you feel like you can't make it, but you can't get up high that I can't make it. You ain't going to make it. You got to say, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens in me. Maybe this or that won't work to how you want it to work, but I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. My feelings tell me that I'm not a preacher. But guess what? I'll start preaching if I get a person that'll listen, not just in church. My feelings tell me that I ain't righteous. But guess what? The Lord said that by his blood, I've been, you've been made righteous. You got to know the devil's tricks. And if he got your mind, he got your whole walk. This thing wasn't done in a corner. All right, my God, I'll tell you. Praise the Lord. Hey, don't get mad at me because I'm, I'm a drink. I'm a drink. I'm a drink. And if you a real alcoholic, you don't need to drink with nobody. I wish I could get somebody to say amen. I don't see people going to liquor store in, in tens and twenties. Because, you know, we got, I got to have my worship with a whole lot of people. They go by themselves and get their brown bag, get right back in their Cadillac, and drive on down the road. Because they going to take their little snort. Because they, they addicted. They know how to do the do. Well, as a Christian, when we learn how to become spiritually addicted to God's spirit, we won't need a crowd. And everything to be, come on, y'all ain't saying nothing. I don't know why I'm saying this, man. But you know what? The first thing people run to when they, they're alcoholics, they run to the bottle. You ain't talking to somebody ain't never took a drink before. So let's just be honest about that. Let's get that behind us. So this ain't about me. But it's real easy. I, I got pressure on me. 
Let me pour a shot. But once you start to learn that the Holy Ghost can take care of that, you ain't got to do that. And you ain't got to feel that guilty. Uh, is my breath smell? Is it coming out of my pores? I can't talk. I got to chew 10 packs of juicy fruit to go to work and do stuff. People understand that. You got to have that same mindset with the Holy Spirit. That I'm going to go and get me something if I got to go by myself. I don't need a whole carload of folk to go get it. Because I need something right now. And when you start doing that, it just comes naturally. Same way with smoking. You know why people smoke? They get under pressure for a minute. They say, that drag going to help me out. I don't say this to condemn people. I say it to say the enemy conditions you to do certain things. When you feel lonely, you call Bill. Hey, Bill. Hey, Sally. The enemy conditions your mind to do certain things because you ain't learned how to drink from the fountain of the Lord yet. You feel lonely. Let me call somebody that want to just talk. I need somebody to talk to me. But when you condition that God is my source, you ain't got to call nobody. You ain't got to get the car and go, go out and get nothing. You ain't got to go down to Cannibal's Joint and get you a bag. And I'm not saying this to condemn anybody. I'm saying that this is where people are living in the 21st century before Jesus come because they are thirsty. You ain't got to call Bill or Lucille. Because you got to deal with the, the, the fallout from that. And all them others. You got to deal with the guilt and shame of it. You do. You just call on the Lord. And if you'll stay with him long enough, if you'll sit, be quiet, you may not be able to read your Bible. You'll have a situation where you can't open the Bible. You just that under attack. But you need to be still, he says, and see that I'm God. That's drinking. Thank you, Spirit of the Lord. And that's what a lot of us, beloved, as Christians, we fail to do. We get all dressed up to go to the party. That's drinking all in the, the Lord's table. And we just know, I, I, you know, I'm above that. I can't get happy because if I get happy, people will think some. If I pray too much, they'll think I'm sad, something going on in my life. We got all reasons for passing up. Some of the drinks we're going to take from the Spirit is going to bring us to repentance, to mourning. It's all on the Lord's table. When you come, you ought to be taking shots. And that shot might give you joy that you ain't never had before. That shot may cause you to repent of something that you've been hiding and keeping. Because the Holy Spirit don't just come to entertain us. He comes to say, drink and eat. Thank you. I speak for him. Amen. Amen. I speak for him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you love the Lord today? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Praise him. Do you really love him? Look at my nephew over there, man. Clap your hands for my nephew. He came in from Arkansas. Amen. He surprised me. I knew we had talked about getting together, but he just drove down here anyway. Good to see him, man. That's my favorite nephew. I heard it. Well, the others don't watch church service. <laughs> they don't watch church. <laughs> yeah, they're going to watch him. They ain't watching it yet. So uh, that's my favorite nephew right there. <laughs> and if they're watching it, good. Sometimes the Lord provokes you to jealousy to get you to do what you're supposed to do. He did it to Israel. He provoked them to jealousy. He had to make them mad before they started. He's like, you mean you're going to save all them old pork eating people? Them people eating pork and swine? All that mess? And he said, yep. And then they, then they tried to get their act together. <laughs> 
So, you know, God, if you won't do what God say, he'll just have somebody else do it. You better hear me. Hey, let's look at 1 John 5, 6, and 9. Good to see you. God bless you. I'm going to give you this little snack, and we're going to move on. Holy Spirit has already spoken to us. You better take that, man. That's a prophetic word for us for now. Amen. This stuff works. This stuff works. But I want you to look at 1 John chapter 5, verse 6. It works. Our fellowship is with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our fellowship is with the Holy Spirit. Our fellowship with the Holy Spirit. How can two walk together except they be agreed? We got to agree with the Holy Spirit. If we agree with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is God. He is not, he's not the gopher. He's God. If we will agree, there's another level for all of us. <clears throat> Before we can get big, we got to learn how to appreciate God where we are small, where our strength is small. Are y'all listening? Amen. <clears throat> Say something every now and then. Let me know you're out there. But if not, I'll just talk to the people who may be watching him because. Uh, all right. First John chapter 5. Now, I want you to underline this because if you need anything today, you, we, me, you, we need what this scripture says. We need not only the understanding of it, but we need it in our walk and expression. And if God will give me a few minutes and the Holy Spirit will help me, he'll say what he wants to say about it. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come. I ask you that you will give us enlightenment. This is your word. We don't want to handle it deceitfully. We don't want to handle it <coughs> in a way that you don't approve of. So I ask in Jesus' name, not only to use this vessel to, to share it, but take these minds and jars of clay that you've made and cause them to be able to hear. Because if they hear it, Lord, you're going to get the glory. Jesus is going to be glorified. And the kingdom of God within them will grow. I ask you to do it in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. All right, here's what the words say. Look carefully. It says, this is he. <coughs> Who is he? Stop right there. Go to verse 1. <clears throat> Sometime when you read the word and you come in in the middle of not a, so much a chapter. You got to remember the word when it was first written. It wasn't written with all the numbers in it. <coughs> Excuse me. But we are in the middle of a thought. So when it says this is he, you wouldn't start reading a letter that way. This is he. You're going to be like, first of all, who wrote this? Who, who? Well, we know John wrote it, but who is he talking about? We got to go to verse 1. He says, whosoever believe that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And that now when we go to verse 6, this is he. So whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Then we can actually go to verse 6. All the other stuff is important. But whoever believes that Jesus is born of God, how do they believe it? Because they came by water and blood. Didn't say nothing about they joined a church. They came to a church or they left a church. Didn't say whether they got a church in their house. Didn't say whether they go to a big church and make a church or go to a small church. Get all that out of your mind. Didn't say whether they could sing. Didn't say, I know they believe because they can sing. Didn't say, I know they can believe because they play skillfully on the instrument. Didn't say, I know they believe because they don't smoke, they don't drink. All that's works. But listen, it says, this is he who came by water and blood. Who is the he? Well, in this case, I'm one of the he's. You can be a he. And it didn't say she because it calls you sons, not daughters of God. We can work that in. Well, ain't I a daughter of God too? No, you're a son of God. But this is he, just like I got to deal with being a brat. You got to deal with being a he, being a son. Okay? 
It ain't hard for me. I'm bride of Christ. I don't feel in no way like a woman. You got to say, I'm a son of God. Because in, there is nothing about gender. Neither male nor female. See, we the one get hung up on that. But it says, this is he that came water and blood, slash Jesus Christ, not only by water, but by water and blood. Now, I'm talking about the gospel with the Trinity. And then it says, and it is the Spirit who bear witness because the Spirit is true. Look at verse 7. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. These three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one, the Trinity of the Holy Spirit. Now, listen, I'm going to make this real simple. It ain't going to be hard. But in heaven, in heaven. Earth is God's footstool, and heaven is his throne. In heaven, there are three that bear witness. It's the Father. It's right there in front of you. You can underline it. The Father, the one who created all things. The Word. Notice it's a capital W. The Word and the Holy Spirit. And then there are three that, uh, uh, the, and these three are one, excuse me. And in verse 8, and there are three that bear witness on earth, okay? Notice it is the Spirit, S, capital Spirit. It is not little s, spirits. It is the Spirit. That's God, the Holy Spirit. I'm here to, for a moment, to speak for God, the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to call him an abused one because you can't abuse him. He's all-powerful. But the one that we neglect the gospel with the Trinity, that's with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I want you to look at verse 8 again now. There are three that bear witness on earth. Now, here are the three that bear witness on earth. Witness to what? Witness to, let's go back, verse, chapter 5, verse 1. Stay with me here. Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. So there are three that bear that Jesus is the Christ and that a person is born of God. There are three in heaven and there are three in earth. Uh -huh. Then it says, uh, verse 6, this is he who came by water and blood. Not water only, Jesus Christ, not water only, but, but water and blood. And it's the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is true. So here, I, I got to get you to see this. I wish I had uh, my easel to write it down. Three in heaven that are bearing witness to the fact that you or I or any person is born of God. And there's three in the earth that bear witness that you, me, anybody's born of God. I'm going to say this, and it may not, people don't like the way I say it, but God doesn't really care what your opinion is. He has to really insult our mind to get into our spirit, offend our minds. Because in heaven, they got to bear record if you were born of God to overcome the world, this cosmos, all the stuff that I just finished talking about, you know, that are out here that people are thirsting for. There are three, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. But there are three in the earth that need to bear record. I'm repeating myself because this is important. Because folk will say they hear me and they don't hear you. What are those three, real quick? Tell me again. I got to make sure. That's in, the, where are they? Which one? That's earth. Now, we're in heaven. Okay. So now, if you all got that, there's three that have to bear record that you are born again in heaven. And there's three that have to bear record continually. Let me throw that in there. That you are still walking with God in the earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. They must, it's a constant record. If they are bearing record, you are in the process continually overcoming the world's mindset. 
And here's where I say God don't care nothing about, some people are going to take this wrong, about your church strut, your church strut. I go to church. And yet he do, because hopefully you'll hear certain truths. So as I said, kids can't handle a loaded weapon. But the record is not my church. It's not going to find somebody with a record that I got baptized in water at that church. I go to church. I pay tithes at that church. All of those are things you should do because you're being fed at this location. You want to come in and have uh, cool air in the summer. You want to have heat. You want to have water if you want to go and wash your hands after you, you know, go in the bathroom. That's just common sense. But the witness is the Father has to be bearing witness the Word Capital W R D in the spirit. And if they are bearing witness in your life, you can overcome habits. I don't care how long you've been doing something. Man, people always tell me I've been doing a long time. You could almost look at people if you're not careful, man. They've been dang on ever. Yeah. You know why? Because they need to overcome the world. And when you overcome the world, it tells you how to overcome the world. But it has to be a continual thing. And you need the witness. Now, the three in the earth is what I want to make sure we understand. The three in the earth is right here. It says it's the spirit, the water, and the blood. There's no way that you can say that you're in fellowship with the spirit, capital S, and not reading his word. Or not in some way getting the word into your spirit, whether you listen it or some hear it. But you've got to be intentional. So, the reason you need it, I'm not saying it's to condemn you because you're so busy you can't get to the Word. But if you don't, you're not going to be able to bear record that you have overcome this world. You'll continue to overcome the world. You're going to get weak. And you'll start doing stuff that, that you know is questionable. You blame everybody else. I'm doing this because, you know, because this person done this to me and I feel I had to go do something. You know, all this. You know, I, you know, no. You, you have disconnected yourself from the spirit, from the water, and from the blood. Because when you disconnect, you can't overcome the world. You're flesh. You're in the world, not other world. You're going to lie like everybody else. You're going you're gonna to cheat like everybody else. You're going to have adulterous, unclean thoughts like everybody else. You're going to want to fornicate. You're going to see some dude, and you're going to be like, dang, I, you, I, 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 I take him home. You're going to see some woman. And you're going to drive down the street. You're going to double take. Almost run in the back of somebody looking at, looking at their behind. I ain't saying it's condemning. I'm saying what's happening, you haven't overcome in the world because your lust are surfacing. I ain't condemning all the drinkers, all the smokers, all the people medicinally doing it, but all them, they're giving it to their friends. But I'm telling that a lot of it because their lust, they can't overcome the envy. You can't overcome temptation. You can't overcome temptation, you're going to sleep around. You're going to be unfaithful. That's the world. But who is he that overcometh the world? You're going to be a single man and think that just because women's got nice stuff and they offering it to you for free. Did you supposed to take it? I'm only a man. I'm only a man. I'm only a woman. I'm single and da, 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 I'm ready to man. All that mess. You, you, your, your deal is you haven't overcome the world mindset because you haven't spent time with the capital S spirit. Yeah. I ain't saying it's condemn you. You haven't spent time being washed by water and letting the blood do what it do. Come on, listen to me. Listen to what the Lord's trying to say. Don't mean you don't go to church and you got a position. But you be a lying, gossiping, angry all the time, tear up a church, can't win nobody, stuck, drain the poor preacher, and then when you get tired of him, you move on. Go drain the next one. Because he's been trying to get the world out, the spirit trying to get the world out you all the time. And you just, a lot of folk, they just ain't going to let go of their habits. Are you hearing me? So if you have overcome the world, 
you have had to, you have to overcome those things because the world is going to be burned up. All of that's going to be left behind. I don't care how much you sing, who you are, and what you do. I care if you are a pastor, apostle. And I don't say this to be offensive. But who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? This is saying that in the earth God is saying, that's my man, that's my girl right there, because they got my spirit in them. And how you know they got their spirit in them? Because when they get to that fork in the road where they could go right or left, and, and, and one of them's the wrong way, my spirit leads them the right way. They can go to church, and the whole church could be going to the left. And all of them singing, tear the place up singing. All of them preaching, preach the place down full, parking lot full. That's what we want. So we can hide in our sin and grin at one another, then see each other later. But the Spirit will tell you, you can never walk in spiritual power with that in your life. And you will not overcome the world. And thus, when I come, I'm going to leave you behind. Because you got to overcome the world. There ain't no preacher, no apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor can say, we all say, there, he ain't no but a man, he ain't but God. But when it comes to our salvation, we won't receive the truth because we figure if he didn't tell me, I must be okay. If my pastor loved me, I must be okay. My pastor loved me. They love me at my church. And that's what a whole lot of folks think they're going to heaven because they church loved him. But the pastor could be a liar, a thief, a robber, murderer, a whole congregation. 